Hey YouTube, this is React City and this is the React Cast. I'm Marky. I'm Rose. I'm Nikki. And welcome to season two. Woo! Yeah. So new season, we're just trying to uh, keep going with a new branding. You can see that we've got the shirts and stuff that Rose worked on. The merch store is there in the description. Please let us know what you think of the designs overall. It took quite a bit of time for her to finally get it all done. So yeah. I think it looks great. Me but I too. want to know what you guys think. Yes, and new colorways are coming soon. She's working hard on those. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a bit of trivia before we start. So it comes from Theo A. Forster, someone who is, I remember him from a long time ago. I think he actually was on the Villain Saga season one oh, and really? then disappeared and came back for season two. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so he was saying a fun bit of trivia. This arc that Villain Saga is going through is called the Farmland Arc. I think that <laughs> in addition to Wineland, it is one of the most common translations for the Norse word Vinland, which oh. literally meant farmland. So a lot of people feel like this is just a really cozy arc. It's going to take a while for us to be on this farm dealing with everything. Yeah. And I mean, how do you feel about it so far? I remember you were talking about season one. Does mm -hmm. season two feel much different for you? Season two is super different. I, I ta We talked about this a little bit in an after talk about how how I'm I'm liking where the direction this is going. Like we've gone through the, the, the tragedy and stuff and now we're just living through the trauma and the aftermath until we find healing. It's yes. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting to me to think about it in the in the way of that it's apparently supposed to be where season was season one was a prologue. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. You know, it's a prologue means it's, it's a setup. Mm -hmm. for what's to that's, come that's it's not, not the main part that's not the main part you know <laughs> so i think i also mentioned this in the after talk that i was i'm a little worried about you know people who came into vinland saga for the action mm -hmm. and got all that in season one season two is nothing like that mm -hmm. at least so far and from what we're hearing is not going to be anything like season one mm -hmm. so i'm worried about that i really want vinland saga to do well because i like vinland saga i like season one but mm -hmm. i'm also the type of person i'm more i'm very much like you where i enjoy this kind of you know character development you know i don't have to have action mm -hmm. you know to enjoy the the anime mm -hmm. I, I think you likened it to re-zero yeah where... like, I, I love seeing the the trauma and tragedy and and a complete angst and despair until we get the little flower at the end yes you know? mm -hmm. then everything's fine we're good for a while for a while yeah. right yeah i know but that's the best part is that it keeps happening over and over and over again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyways, yeah. So I, 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 I'm looking forward to it. I do like mm -hmm. um, season two, and I, I, I hope it holds something in there that you'll still enjoy too. You know mm -hmm. that it won't be like such a departure from Vinland Saga season one mm -hmm. that. No, I, I mean I'm enjoying it. Like um, with Vinland Saga, a big part of it for me, while I did enjoy the battles and stuff, like Thorkel, I. I was really there for the people for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard for me to get into character stories mainly because uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like I can get into character stories more when I'm reading a book. But mm -hmm. if I'm watching a show, it's hard for me to care about those people. But mm -hmm. there's something about Villain Saga the way it introduced itself. It felt so grand. I felt mm -hmm. like this is an adventure that I just mm -hmm. got started on and mm -hmm. I wanted it to continue. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with all this season going by and not a single fight happening. Yeah. Right. Like like I'm in the mindset. Yeah. I don't know if like I'm this is a continuing yeah. the life. They yeah. somehow set that up perfectly. Mm -hmm. no, like like a book. You you're yeah. not expecting a fight on every page, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready for that, but of course something could change while I'm actually watching it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time I feel like Thorfinn's story needs less combat for him to develop. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the fights, he had the less, the least amount of character development when he was the coolest. Yes, that is true. Yeah. He stayed the same for most of season one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is true. He kind of like went like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where Ascalad was. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, so I had, I thought about that. Oh, I was thinking a couple of things. Number one, the, I think the fact that it's called Saga may have helped towards that. Because I remember when you first introduced Vinland Saga to us, you were telling us, like, you were even trying to explain when things weren't happening at a pace that we were Sorry. used to. Things weren't happening at a pace that we were used to or something. <laughs> okay, let me give you a break. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just silently drink with a bunch of ice in your metal bottle? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember what brought it up, but I remember you were like, for some reason, trying to explain to us that no, guys, it's a saga. 
meaning you know this is a do you remember this a vaguely yeah and it's like you're trying to like calm us down or like get our, our focus or standards in the right place because mm-hmm. we were we were like expecting something and it was going at a, something else was happening and we're like what is happening this doesn't make any sense yeah and yeah. and you were like no it's a saga it's, it's like a it's a journey mm-hmm. i think you were like mm-hmm. trying to say it's it's just a long story and mm-hmm. you need to kind of settle in yeah and i remember that really at least helped me to um kind of put everything in perspective mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for Vinland Saga that I'm I'm here to to learn about some people and this world mm-hmm. and to understand their struggle mm-hmm. and it's, it's supposed to be a journey it's not supposed to be like okay big climb to the top reach yeah. oh, done it's not that mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah because I think it was because we had just had Thorfinn um, massive spoilers for season one I mean, I just had Thorfinn's dad die and then years pass and then this kid's just so angry and he can't get his revenge and then more years pass and then we cut to that remember that one episode with the girl and her family got killed mm-hmm. the whole ring in the tree thing and oh, just, it yeah. felt like a lot of things were coming at us and not a whole lot of things were occurring for the main story mm-hmm. so yeah I just I mean even for myself when I was saying that for you guys I was also saying it for myself because I, I got the feeling that this show was trying to be almost like not trying to be like Attack on Titan, but you know where Attack on Titan, you knew the story was going to take a while? Yeah. Like, I got that feeling from it immediately. Mm-hmm. Which, um, speaking of which, if this, if the previous was the end of the prologue, do you think that means that Einar is kind of the main protagonist? Mm-hmm. And that backstory was like Thorfinn's backstory for him being the secondary protagonist? Because we're two episodes in and Thorfinn is not the protagonist. Not at least the main Not protagonist. the main character right now. Yeah, not the yeah, main yeah. character. Yeah. True. And on top of that, Thorfinn's not the one with the love interest. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, that's about true. It they didn't give it to Thorfinn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, if they if Thorfinn had the love interest, it would ruin something. It, it, something to me is kind of tropey. He just about, needs his coldness. Yeah, period, he needs you know? a coldness period where he doesn't care about anything, not mm-hmm. even a pretty woman. You yeah. know, it has to be earned. It has to be earned. Yeah, yeah. and I don't feel like he he's earned it yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love doesn't fix from a, from it. From a character's no. perspective. Yeah, yes. I feel like it would be too tropey for him to like snap out of it for a girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad it's Einar, mm-hmm. but I, I want to think through like the idea of Einar being the protagonist because it could it could be a thing where I'm gonna refer to Twilight (laughs) but Twilight did this thing where I think it was the last book there were like two or three different perspectives Mm -hmm. that it told a story from Mm -hmm. and it it was it I I can't even remember the reason that she the author did that but it 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 kind of gave body to those each characters but it kind of it didn't really you didn't really feel like no Bella's still the main character yeah you know it, it didn't feel like oh are we changing um, directions here yeah. no so to me that's kind of how it feels like with mm. Einar I feel like they're just taking on a new perspective let's look from the outside at Thorfinn mm-hmm. and maybe through someone else's eyes you know dictate what he is going through mm-hmm. or speak into his life and maybe just view him from a different way it's kind because of, right now we're nowhere we're not in thorfinn's head at all no we don't know what what why is he here why has he settled down to be a slave when he could have left and gone home with leaf mm-hmm. you know what brought him here we don't know and we won't find out for a while i don't think yeah and i feel like that's the author's intention mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, i feel like einar for a brief moment he nearly went on the journey to the place where thorfinn is yeah. Like that state of just completely broken and given up and just in this life. Yes. Thorfinn's there and he's been there for a long time. Like mm-hmm. he's working to get his freedom, but does he even care? Does he care? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. He looks he looks at it and he knows it's a long time. Yeah, the master mm-hmm. is just like, okay, this is what you're going to do. This is the deal. Has Thorfinn made any conscious thought of like, okay, so I'll be free after this? Or is he just doing, going where yeah. the wind takes him? I feel like and at the end of this, it. he just stays on the farm. Or yeah. Like yeah. Where, whereas Einar, he nearly fell into that pit of despair. So they kind of have to meet halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I brought up uh, the comparison to Attack on Titan because we have some Attack on Titan news. Oh, really? We got a release date. <gasps> what? Yes, and it is March 1st. Everything is this Third. year. Everything is the beginning of this year. What um, are we going to do, guys? We're just going to watch 70 animes in a day. Oh, at once. It's fine. <gasps> oh, my gosh. They did a trailer, but of course we can't be watching that trailer of because not. if it does show anything new, probably just want to wait till we get to see that. And also, mm-hmm. just from the picture, it looks it's like a it's a little young one. Yeah, it's, it's doing flashbacks to stuff we've previously seen. Just get mm-hmm. hype going, I, I'm guessing. so. Maybe, yeah, probably. May, or maybe that and maybe, what's his name? Um, Aaron will get 
like actual you know new flashbacks mm. that mm. we haven't seen yeah and may I point out that the people who are streaming this trailer is called Pony Canyon I just had to point that out I see yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it, to help get hype going NHK is releasing a seven part compilation anime which will be airing on NHK for three consecutive nights starting February 25th I mean we can't be watching that no no but, no I mean, we won't be watching Wait, what did you say? Seven consecutive nights? No, no. Seven part compilation yeah, yeah. that will be airing on three se- consecutive nights. Three consecutive nights. Mm-hmm. So seven shows in seven nights. Um, three seven nights. shows in three nights. Yeah. yeah. 21 shows. Heck no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's we, compilation. It's, it's just it's showing the whole, yeah, it's the whole... Yeah. They're trying to get everyone caught up to speed. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, they want to be hyped. If it's seven parts, I imagine they're just like cutting out the fast and just remember this, remember that, remember mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. And it's February 25th, so it's just a get everyone for March 3rd yeah um, this better not be another final part part 4 part 5 and a half or something like that. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking of that I'm, I'm happy that they, they came clean and just said no this is a compilation and didn't say this is an uh, alternate what if universe kind of sort of <laughs> like click <laughs> <cold gas. laughs> when it was all just the same stuff taking out two things <laughs> anyways and it, uh, it will be a couple days off from an exactly 10 year anniversary of the original release of Attack on Titan wow. on the show. Gosh. April 2013 was the first episode. Oh my wow. gosh. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You maybe know? Uh, you, maybe they're, they've been rushing to end it. And that's why they, they like had these dates of, yeah, we're going to end, we're going to end. And no, we still need to do more things. Maybe they wanted it like to end around the anniversary. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, that's possible. Or, or maybe they wanted to release something special around the anniversary, like maybe a follow-up OVA or something. I mean, it's such a titan, pun intended, <laughs> that they could have gotten away with, uh, on the 10th anniversary, we're going to have a trailer for an OVA. There's so many characters they could have an OVA about. Yeah, yeah. like backstory. literally an, any character. Any like character. Any Connie. Any, yeah. yeah. Him and his mom. They keep talking about, the, like, they show how much he cares about his mom and how he doesn't want, you know, to finish off the, t- the titan mom. Mm-hmm. But... I, f- I never really felt the connection because I d- I, we didn't get a whole lot of perspective from Connie. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if they did a backstory on Connie, it would mm-hmm. have a lot more impact for those scenes where he's really sad or angry at Aaron. And everyone else is like, no, we can move on and forgive Aaron. He's like, oh, hell no. Yeah. You know? I feel like it add weight to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything from Attack on Titan that... Like, how do you think it's going to end? Have you ever thought about that over this time that we've been waiting for <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've talked through so many possibilities of like how can we like avoid genocide but avoid killing the rest of the world like yeah. what is the solution i can't think of a clean solution at all at least not a, a grand massive beautiful ending that no. attack and Titan deserves it deserves something massive and unfortunately it, it might be brutal mm-hmm. that's how it feels like brutal is the only solution but i i believe in the writers i believe in the brainstorming team <laughs> Whoever is responsible. Maybe it's gonna end like Charlotte. Uh, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the Charlotte anime. Uh, maybe it's just gonna end where, uh, you know, guy forgets everything and he's just like uh, partially like just out of it, just for the rest of his life. But he's happy, you know. It's fine. Yeah, you've told me about that show and mm-hmm. I was so into it from you it's, describing it. It's. It's such a good anime. I will never recommend. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> ending, the, ending, the yes. ending sounds horrible. It's like it's like, okay, I guess this is a logical conclusion with what you've given me. But why did you give it to me? You know, it's like, <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> oh yeah, it's that. That sounds like a, a being written into a box there. Mm. Yeah, that's, I kind of. Yeah, I want you guys to watch it just so I can vent about, about it, it with you guys, but I can't. In good conscience, put you through that. <laughs> you especially. I, I don't think I can. Take no, it. you can't. Uh, I pretty much know everything that happens from the Red Sands <laughs> already, but yeah, I mean, hmm. I love Train of Thought. Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, it's Charlotte's one of those shows. I mean, I've had shows I've watched that I thought it'd be really cool to show you guys, but I just either think you don't, want, you wouldn't be into it, mm-hmm. or the amount of sadness that comes for the ending it. isn't very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh-huh. like for me. I could deal with any kind of sad ending. In fact, I like it when a show drifts towards a realistic ending. Mm-hmm. But 
I want the endings to be happy, mm-hmm. but I don't want it to be unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. So like, if I get a happy ending that makes no sense, that will upset me more than a sad ending that makes sense. A key to the exam. A key to the exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a fever dream. <laughs> but, but with if I get a sad ending, I want an epilogue. I want like two years later, three years later. I want an aftermath of how did that go. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be happy or sad, but I just want to know what trend it went on mm-hmm. afterwards. Because sometimes I'd be like, uh, the battle is over and the two of them like just shake hands at the ending and the sunset pans down. I was like, okay, what happened next? Did they like go to the, back to the kingdom? Did they go off to become farmers? Like, <laughs> I don't know how the ending, maybe they actually didn't forgive each other and just kill each other right there. I don't know. <laughs> I want to know th- what happened after the ending. Yeah. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. In- interestingly enough, I, I'm kind of on that same train whereas like an overly happy ending kind of annoys me because yeah. it, it takes away some of the weight that the yeah. anime had given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if I have a I can get through a really sad anime if it has a happy ending. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. ReZero is again perfect point. Yeah. I can get through whatever tragedy you because give me. Because we have hope that they they can resolve it. Give us some, even if it's like a only midpoint checkpoint result resolution. Yeah, it, I, it's still enough to carry us through. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I can't. I, yeah, no go. I was just gonna say I can't think of an example right now, but there have been times I've told you it's a really sad show, but it has a happy ending, and that was enough to get you to watch it because you knew it would end well. Yeah. So all of it, all the pain, you could take it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think about. I'm trying to think about like my perspective on that because I think I. I don't like to have to go through a, a terrible trauma in a show. That's why ReZero, it took me a while to get into it. I remember it took us, it was took it till season two? or No, it was that Halfway Kugias. Halfway through season one. I think it was, yeah, I yeah. think it was earlier than Kugia's. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it took me a little while to, like, because I loved, I actually really liked the beginning of ReZero. Because, mm-hmm. well, wow, Subaru was just a fun character, but then all the chaos started, and yeah. I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, yeah. You really, I, 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 I did, like, I, I was dreading the next episode for a while. And then after a while, yeah, I started I to were. feel more hope and, and mm-hmm. trust in the writers that mm-hmm. they, they would rescue me after dangling me over the cliff for a while. And then go, oh, I got you. Don't worry. Oh, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's how I felt. But then I was like, oh, I trust you now. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So I can trust that show. But I wouldn't go into that. Like, I, I've told you, I think at the end of season two, that's the last one we watched. If you told me about this show, mm-hmm. like you set me up for it, I'd no. be like, no, it's a no go. Sorry, yeah. not watching that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, it's it's weird for me to. I don't know if I can. I can't really recommend for myself. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so thinking about like the ending, I definitely needs. I don't know that I need a perfectly happy ending because Akira the Exile was just weird, <laughs> and it, but I was like, I'll deal with it mm-hmm. because. You know, I don't. I, I don't want the other side of things. That was mm-hmm. what I was afraid of with Akita the Exile. Yeah. Because Akita the Exile. Remember, we were like, we were like, is everybody gonna die? Everyone's gonna die, right? Because nobody's in Kogias. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were, we were set up and ready for a very tragic ending. Mm-hmm. But I knew I would, I wouldn't like it. It would, it would I'd be sad and be mm-hmm. like, Ugh, but I have to take it because it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that's where I am on the same train with you. Um, I need a realistic ending. Mm-hmm. I don't let if if it's like that's why Akito the Exile is like okay fine, mm-hmm. but it wasn't realistic, so it it it, it wasn't satisfying, you know. Mm-hmm. And I I like a good satisfying ending, and that's why I can bear like a bittersweet ending, and that's why even Code Geass I mm-hmm. not, is it Code yeah Code Geass um, things were resolved. It resolved and it felt like it it it, made, it was a sensible ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, even having to. You know, slog through the recap episodes, movies, yeah. to go to the resurrection one. It it was it still was a good ending in that one. Resurrection is like okay, I'm happy with that. Even mm-hmm. after going through the trauma of the ending of the first one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sad ending, bittersweet ending, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, it makes sense. There's no other logical ending for this character. Yeah. This needed to happen. So it's cathartic. Yeah. The movie was like the epilogue for me. Yeah. Where mm. I, I didn't expect one, but when I got it, it's like, okay, now this show has elevated. Mm. Because I, I could accept the sad ending for Code Geass, where everything's just, the world's different now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I feel like he went, like at the time at least, of course, spoilers for the ending of Code Geass. At the time, at least, it felt like he went out at his peak. Like, he did it, he outsmarted everybody, he won all the fights, 
and at the very end he, he cheats everyone else and he dies mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and Suzaku he can be amazing under guys I actually don't like when people don't get credit for stuff that they do mm -hmm. but in this case I liked it because I like the idea of Zero being this greater than thing for everyone else mm -hmm. but then when the movie came around at first it was like what direction are they going to go with this how are they going to bring everybody in and they just said screw logic and they brought everybody <laughs> in <laughs> and then everyone's like whatever and then they show the giant mech so like those are ugly but then turn out they could like babushka it all and on the inside the cool version of the mechs were there and then all the people did cool things and everything was resolved in the way I wanted Yeah. so yeah I, I really really enjoyed the ending yes. and then he didn't just come back and cause more trouble no. he goes he off and goes sees away. and yes. they hint at something more so I know they're out there trying to deal with a mystery that I don't need solving. Yeah. And they could never have another movie. You know, they're going to have another movie. They could never have another movie and I'd be satisfied. That's yeah. perfect for me. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just Badushka doll. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah. Yeah, sometimes they keep it every time. They were like, they loved, you loved it the first time. Here's a part two. <laughs> <laughs> Times two. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the release of the, this Attack on Titan is going to be interesting. I, I, I think it wasn't Sunday. I was talking about that. <laughs> It's, it's a no it's not Sunday it's a Saturday release oh um, but oh, it's usually it Sunday be, so is my hero gonna end before that do you know I think it should it's gonna have another 12 what episodes what episode are we on 13 13 mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so 11 more episodes uh, that, yeah that's, that's a little over two months uh, yeah it's gonna run into it a little bit yeah mm -hmm. but yeah it should be it should be and fine and podcasts are currently releasing on Saturdays too mm -hmm. so that's gonna be three shows in one day for a yeah. little bit yeah. or we could just like pause the podcast just for a while just for or that just little overlap time uh, we have a Sunday show as well don't we yeah that's uh, Trigun. Trigun and yeah. then we have a Monday show and then we have a Monday show there's mm -hmm. no room mm -hmm. uh, there's no room in the end but <laughs> Tanya the Evil is going to f it won't quite finish in time for I can't remember what but for something but it, it will be done and we'll get that out of the way and something can go Tuesday. Wait, how, how many episodes are done in the evening? Um, we one have, more. And oh, then okay. the movie. And the movie and an OVA, right? But the OVA is 10 minutes, so that's probably a five-minute reaction. So oh, yeah, we're, we're going to... to the 12. Right, so basically two more days, two more recordings. Two more recording mm -hmm. days. Okay. I was thinking we we might not, we still can't do another poll for a little bit no. because we have Mandalorian coming back as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be Wednesday. Yeah, but the thing is, Demon Slayer is in April. So, Dang and, it! Oh my God. And and Jusa Kaisen's in July. What? Oh Everything is 2023. They're just popping off. We're just fine, guys. We just it's need okay. more hours in the day. Yeah. Okay. That's all. We just, we'll just we'll just petition the man upstairs. That's all. Yeah. Pause the sun, please. <laughs> <laughs> 27 hours at least. Speaking of which, there's going to be a total solar eclipse in 2023, Ooh. and I'd say we all go to Vermont to go check it out. But yeah, so. Uh, also, okay. uh, my wait, hero, what date though? For real? I think it's in April 20. Dang, it should be in September. Yeah, let me check. Let me check. <laughs> I, mean, I think I just made some of those numbers up. Okay. When is the next solar total eclipse? US, you have to put. Uh, 2024, April. April 24. Oh, okay. Yep. Nobody's birthday is in, that, in April. That would give us an excuse to actually do it. <laughs> yeah. we, we could just do it with, you know, life experiences, you know? Sure. There's no need, don't need an excuse. Because the thing is, that's where you'll be able to see it in that line. So mm. I say it goes to Vermont. Mm. But the only time that all of the United States will be able to see it will be in 2044. So it's like 20 more years till the next time it happens. Oh. So, yeah. It's just, uh, I was reading up they about it. Oh. Huh. August. Yeah, I, I was just reading up about it. So apparently, it's like a really cool thing that happens. This is the next thing. Mm. Um, it's like when when it happens. Apparently, something <clears throat> something with sound happens. Like you can hear a sound once Ooh. it's fully blacked out, what? and like the ground vibrates a little bit, but for a few seconds or something like that. That's so cool. That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I want to experience that, but yeah. that might be you. They probably like have places you gather. One hundred percent. We need to reserve so, it now. Yeah, because I, I don't want to be next to too many people. They're all be moving, and they're not going to feel the ground vibrate. Oh, well, well, it's the entire area, right? So it's like a, I guess almost half just the go state, just anywhere. Okay. You'll be on a highway, and you'll see it. You know? <laughs> we'll just stop on the highway. <laughs> yeah, we just set up pitch tents. <laughs> pitch like, tents. <laughs> you know what? There will probably be people doing probably. that, too. It's like, it would, according to the, the measurements. Yeah, we'll just buy our, our glasses ahead yes. of time to just stare at it. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh. No glasses. <laughs> it's just, Iris is gone. <laughs> Goodbye, Retina. 
But speaking of goodbye retinas, so what? in My Hero Academia, they casted Atsumi Tanizaki as Lady Nagant. That had no, nothing to do with retinas, by the way. I just oh, say that. Okay. So the significance of this is actually you know the voice actor. So the voice yeah. actor is the same voice actor for Ancient Magus Bride Chise. Oh. And apparently Anya. From oh, oh, Anya. Uh, also, Anya. Oh, I know the Spanish Spanish dub Anya. I don't yeah, know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what? <laughs> you haven't watched the show. Why do you know the Spanish stuff? No, I'm watching it in Spanish. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the heck? Well, I'm surprised your next question isn't, why are you watching it in Spanish? <laughs> Just to get some extra Spanish practice. All right. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, I, well, I guess this is also, but like, it's, it's far away from this topic. But I was thinking, like, maybe, like, one, a next level of, like, learning another language and, like, practicing is, like, playing your game, setting your game settings to the Oh, language. I fully thought of doing that with Sims. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was going to, like, change it to either Spanish or Chinese. I'm scared for Chinese because, like, there's a lot of characters I don't know. And be like, I'll never be able to go back again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think I thought about it. I think it's a fun challenge, especially for a game where you have a lot of. We should we should make we should vlog it. It's like trying to play Sims in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is uh, one last thing about that Sims. Um, they use a lot of very Simsy ways of saying things. Uh. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, I'm trying to think of a specific. Oh, woohoo! For example, that's just a made up word yeah. mm-hmm. that they they had. So they have they have one in a, a made up word in Spanish for woohoo. A different I, word. Yeah, I watched a Spanish um, Sims player, and I was like, "What is she saying?" Oh, okay, got it. Um, I can't remember what it is now. So it's like a repeated repeated syllable. Mm-hmm. So it just sounds made up. You know, it's like okay. So you're not actually like learning the language. Yeah. Like, so, so there's a lot of made up things that I might think, "Oh, that's how you do. That's how you say that." No. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> that's Sims. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it comes to the territory of the game, but at the same time, I feel like it, it would help you, like, pick up slang easier, I think. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because I, I think I mentioned before, I used to play um, Star Wars Force Unleashed in French. Oh, oh um, really? Yeah, I used to do it in Spanish for a little while, but I just never really enjoyed learning Spanish that much. Mm-hmm. So I, I swapped over to French, and I just played through it, because I played through that game when I started counting, like, 13 times. And so I knew everything everyone was going to say and what they were going to say. Wow. So when I swapped over to French, it was just interesting to hear the voices, and then I knew what they were saying, but in another language. language. So it actually was kind of helping. Cool. Of course, Unleash was a fun game. It was a very fun game. It was very repeatable. I think I played. What number are you up now? I mean, I stopped counting eventually, but I I had a minimum play through that game uh, 30 times, at least 20 times French. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I I, I just started doing it for fun, speedrunning, seeing how fast I could go through it. I only played through it like twice. Yeah. Is that? It's a fun game. It's really fun. Is it the f- the one when you were really little? You played on the TV. It's, I forget what what PlayStation. Was it, it PlayStation? I was, it was, that, PlayStation. was that was that it? Uh, it was I light, saw a lightsaber. Yeah, it's the only time I got the lightsaber. Because I remember there was a Star Wars. I think it was Star Wars that you got like oh, for Christmas, um, and like that evening you beat the game or something like that, or oh, the next you day. Do you remember what game? I that think was? I got it for Christmas. I think I did. I think it was that game because you you loved it from the first time you played it and you beat it like really fast and like mm-hmm. you what you finished the game. Yeah. What? <laughs> I, you were really young too. Was is, I might be thinking of a different Force Unleashed. Is it? Um, because one of these is on PC and you you're playing. There's a sequel on PC. Okay, and you get to choose your powers on whether you go light side or dark side, which is like every Star Wars game. I apologize. That was not very specific. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Wookiee um, bowcaster that disintegrates people when you upgrade it. No, you can't upgrade the Wookiee bowcaster. Oh, I'm thinking, okay, I'm yeah. thinking of a different one then. Yeah, the force detonation, remember that, where you could like explode and everything around you explodes. I think, is it with Star Crusher? Star Killer. Star Killer, yes, mm, okay, Star yeah, Killer, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. also a good one. I didn't play that one, but I loved watching you play it. Yeah. <laughs> I just sit behind you and be like, yeah, yeah this is fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard for back then, especially, I remember I eventually like just had to st- not had to but I just stopped mentioning how fast it beat games because <laughs> it's already just like a time wasting hobby kind of thing but if you if like mom bought, bought me a game and it's like I beat it immediately it almost got I got the feeling that she thought it was almost like a waste to get it in the first place if you mm-hmm. got through it so quickly but it's not like an expendable resource like you drink water or something yeah. it's something you do keep doing over and over again until mm-hmm. you get bored yeah I, I feel like 
older games have more replayability. I want to explore that because I'm interested. I, I like the idea of making a game one day. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to understand, like, what is it that older games did differently? Can you think well, about it? Yeah, yeah, I've thought about it a bit. I think a lot of it had to do with, what, for one, you couldn't patch games for a lot of older games. So they had to be finished products. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times when you sold a game, it was you were selling, this is going to be hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. of replayability fun. So that was a big component. Mm -hmm. But another component is the lack of ability to make a massive game mm -hmm. so the game that Simplicity. you made yeah it, because it was simpler mm -hmm. you mastered what you had and the gameplay loop itself had to be really good whereas nowadays not, not all games are bad or anything uh, there are a lot of good games but there's more opportunity to look at all the parts of this car instead of just look at a working car like uh, older games if it was a puzzle game that's all mm -hmm. it ever was but with these days almost every game is kind of an open world game mm -hmm. and because of that they, it doesn't really master anything mm -hmm. so a, a, a big issue is just they spam quests you've got 30 different things to do but nothing feels particularly deep mm -hmm. so like when I when I um, like I used to play DOS games when I was 12 or so I didn't grow up with DOS games it's just that was available sometimes so I played like Red Baron right mm -hmm. it's a very simple flight game very simple flight game but it's got like things in there where sometimes uh, an enemy ace will just challenge you to a duel like dropping a letter on your airfield you could start on the airfield you could start in the mission you had time compression all these different things that you could do and then you had little medal ceremonies for every time you got kills if you try to play a flight game these days they're either super super complicated because the technology advanced to the point where you can make them complicated or they're super arcadey more simple than the red baron game which was the dos game from the 1996 you know? mm -hmm. so i just feel like with more options, the developers themselves have started to hamstring themselves where they either have too much or too little. Yeah. Like, there's no in-between. The only mm -hmm. things that are in-between are in-deep developers, but the problem with that is in developers are hyper-specific, which is good for them. Mm -hmm. They make good games, but it's not really stuff that you want sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, like, I, I still can't find replacement for Red Baron. Red, Rise of Flight is too complicated. Uh, Battle of Stalingrad is not quite what I'm looking for. There's not another Red Baron out there. So yeah. I need an indie developer to make it, Yeah, but... <laughs> No any developers interested. <laughs> yeah, you need, a, you need someone to yes. think of making exactly what you want. Yes. It's yes. not going to happen. Yes. Whereas if we were still with the tech from back then, they just keep making Red Baron games. Yeah. Forever. That's yeah. all they will ever do. Yeah. Because you stick on your road and you keep moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think something that might contribute to, I guess, the problem with the current ecosystem with games is just the ecosystem of the games. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of the, I want to say the culture of the game industry right now, mm -hmm. where it's really a grab for as much money as possible. Oh yeah. A, a crappy first game and they say, okay, they patch it until it's better. Like even games that, like Sims, like I think about. Yeah. Which is my o the only game I'll ever play in my entire, not, not just a joke, but my favorite game that mm -hmm. I'll ever play. They first release sucks every time. The yeah. only time it didn't suck was the very first one. <laughs> <laughs> the very first one back in what 1993 or whatever mm -hmm. and since two i think wasn't too bad i think it was 2003 like 2000 I it was 2000 I'm sure it was in 2003 i remember finding an advertisement in our sims one it was 2000 it was like two, two um sims <coughs> two coming in 2000 okay um but it, it wasn't as bad it, it it came the first box came out really was good but mm -hmm. sims three sims four and I'm pretty sure Sims 5, which they're hinting at, is going to be terrible, the first mm -hmm. release. And then they patch it to better. And that's just the, the pattern these days. And they mm -hmm. know people will buy. They, they you know, and, it, mm -hmm. and then that's just part of it. But then also on top of it is kind of the idea of trying to get as many of the, the mainstream as possible. As yeah. many, like, like all the likes, mm -hmm. all the interests, mm -hmm. instead of being in a, sticking to your niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So being a specialized tool, you have just yeah. a multi-tool for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's why all the games are open world, because everyone found the freedom of a world very alluring and mm -hmm. fun early on. Mm -hmm. And so every game that comes out has to has be to. open world. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's really dry, but I don't want to jingle jangle with this. <laughs> Which is positive. Drinks aggressively. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, I, I, there was a time like a couple of years ago where people were just in general complaining about open worlds. Like, let me stop having open worlds because it, some of them were just so bad. Yeah. yeah. Like, some of them just be, it's an open world. Your objective's over there. It's still nothing to do in the world. Yeah. Your objective's just, over there. You can drive wherever you want, but. I'm not gonna find anything. Yeah. <laughs> 
can't open any doors. Can't talk to anybody. Just yeah. You Maybe know. you'll find a secret. Yeah. Well, like a, a true open world is something like Grand Theft Auto, where Grand Theft Auto is a really hard hard mark to hit. But mm-hmm. it's a massive world. There's lots of stuff to do in it, and not everything has to have a super amount of depth. But it feels like a living world. Like mm-hmm. a living world is a true open world. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have schedules. They get up. They do stuff, and then they go back to bed. Like Red Dead Redemption, Witcher Three. They all have this kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah. Yeah, I, I that was my first like when I think of open world, that was my excitement about that whole idea of like, oh, there other people are living and I can mm. interrupt them. You know, yeah. it's like hi, I'm visiting. Can you make me some cake? <laughs> um, but I don't know. I've I've always dreamed of that, and and make the idea that I've I was wanted to make a game was I was wanted to make something like that where. Um, you can just jump in and be a part of it. Mm-hmm. I actually have um, like a flashes of m- a memory of something like, oh, a game I was trying to make for you, actually. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Geo? This little character I made named Geo. I don't I think I showed name. you much. Yeah, I don't I, remember. When I started learning Flash, I started making a game for him and it was supposed to be it was supposed to be open world. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't do that. But it was the idea it was just going to be a giant map and you have to go around and talk to specific people and they're just going to do their own thing and you have to go learn things here and then go fight things over there. But it was supposed to be just one giant map. It was way out of my league. But I was that was my idea. And I, I got so excited because that was like one of my things that I always wanted to do was like this massive world where you can go on adventures. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was around the time where they were starting to talk about these open world thing and became a thing. It was, they were starting to develop it. It was getting more, um, what is it, attainable? Not even just traction. Like people were able to do it more easily. Mm -hmm. So more people were doing it. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like, I was excited about it, but I never found like, I never, I think, yeah, I never found a, a game that, met my expectations perfectly with that. I think Sims 3 is probably really close. Mm-hmm. And it's the o- one of the only reasons I play Sims 3 because I hate the art. It's yeah. so bad. Uh, yeah. The art? I, really? We yeah. both hated the way it looked I, when it came I out. I barely wow. played Sims 3. Barely. I bought I bought it because yeah. like, I'm a Sims baby, but I barely played it. Mm. Mm. It's, it's I remember disgusting. it took us a while to get it as well. Yeah, we never got yeah, we didn't get it for like two or three years. Uh-huh. Yeah. The only thing the only thing that I, what, that I was missing was the fact that you could change the colors of everything. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, that would be so. That was fun. fun. Yeah, that's what a lot of people like. Mm-hmm. But there are people who Sims Three is their game because that's when they came on the Sims bandwagon. But mm-hmm. ugly. Um, <laughs> but one thing I loved about Sims Three was the it was it was i want to say yeah. it was a pretty decent open world like it, it was like entirely you know yeah but it was basically what you're describing mm-hmm. where you know people wake up and go to bed they go to work they mm-hmm. you can go, see them going you to can work. see them going to work they can they can like literally work can, in the supermarket there that you're gonna go and buy groceries at yeah you mm-hmm. can follow them yeah you the can be a stalker to, yeah and, and stalk people at the they go to the the park and then just follow them home. Literally follow them home. Go into their house, and you could probably kill them if you wanted to. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you could... brought the cow. Yeah, you, yeah, or you know, you could do things. But um, anyways, <laughs> it was a literal open world where you, uh, you could go to the beach and stay there. And the night goes down, and everybody, everything. So I really love that part about it. But then they kind of backtrack from that in Sims Four, mm-hmm. and I got used to Sims Four mini. It's kind of kind of a mini Sims open world. 3 light Sims 3 light <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, watching you guys play those games is one of the weirdest things because it's, it's like an entire section of gaming dedicated to just this type of game because mm-hmm. there's no games like Sims no. really yeah. and so the people in it are very unique like what they want out of these games with what the kind of DLC that they want the things that they find acceptable mm-hmm. it's just very weird to me <laughs> yeah, um, to we watch. celebrated so hard when farming yeah cottage, cottage, cottage like, living what <laughs> but because I, like cows! <laughs> I I enjoyed Sims 2 I actually played a lot of Sims 1 and I enjoyed Sims 2 but I like the crime aspect of it of building like oh. a mafia or whatever Sims 3 was really good with that oh yeah, yeah I you remember you saying that but then in Sims that. 4 uh, I it, didn't really like Sims 3 get into it mm-hmm. I'll just say that but Sims 4, I, by that time, I was just completely out of Sims. I went, mm-hmm. I looked it up, people were saying it was pretty much non-existent with the crime. I was yeah, like, okay, I guess, like I'm, no... I guess I'm done with Sims. No, there's there's not even robbers. Yeah, that's lame to me. Yeah. I know Sims 3 had, like, super villains, right? 
You could be a superhero. Oh yeah, you could be a superhero. You could be a superhero. Was I think you could be a yes. No, I mean a a, a modded content. No, no, no. It's it was a, a a DLC you could get. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, you could be a supervillain and superhero. I think. Yeah, but that was also they went off to work and you couldn't watch them do that, right? Ye- no, that's it's- Sims Two. Because Sims Two, you could be a super. Oh, Sims- no, Sims Two, you became a super superhero at the end of the police career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that one you went off, you don't see anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Sims Three, I never played Sim- that you part, get, so I don't you know. You don't get to be a superhero in Sims Three. No. But you can become a master villain. But it is one of those things where you can watch them walk to their hideout, but after they get in the hideout, you can't see into the building. Yeah, I, that's what that was what really made me start like Sims. Because for me, I always felt like Sims was progressing to that place where you could watch them do anything mm-hmm. and interact with the world in any way. Mm-hmm. And then when Sims 4 came around, I felt like I felt like they stopped on the journey towards that they magical backtracked. land of being able mm-hmm. to go into every building and having actual consequences for what your Sims do. Yeah. A yeah. simulation. Yeah. You know? That's what I felt like they were heading towards. Mm-hmm. And then it became, no, we're going to be a family game. About building and a community and just yeah. that's not what I was talking about. Where's my crime? Yeah, they even yeah. even in Sims Four, they s- did do like active careers for like three: doctor, detective, and scientist. Mm-hmm. I think they and added actress. one more: actress, actor, actor, actor actor. Actress. Like you mean watching them? You can go to their job mm-hmm. and do everything. Go so the closest to being a criminal is locking up criminals. There, you can be a detective. Mm-hmm. You can like you know interrogate them you can find them guilty lie detector to us you know you can go to a spot where they they hear something is happening you can get calls oh, that's cool yeah and you can like fight people and lose and they ha- if you don't have enough fitness or you can fight them and win and take them in so if that you lose, was do you die no you don't Terrible game. <laughs> <laughs> but i think that was that's they tried that that whole thing and people loved it actually but it was really buggy so I don't know if that's it's that's still just, buggy it's still buggy yeah and the issue with EA is a lot of it has to do with just at the end of the day what can you sell and yeah. I feel like as cool as that stuff is the, your crowd does not need you to keep polishing that and making it better yeah. people will Polish accept what other stuff <laughs> I guess yeah but, but I just mean like what I'm asking for isn't really a big ask with everyone else I feel like mm-hmm. uh, like I don't I think everybody wants to go to that simulation direction that I'm asking for. Yeah. I think people want to just make their family and have a nice, cozy little area. Yeah. I think but people would really enjoy, like, a supervillain DLC, though. That would be awesome. Yeah. I think that would be a great direction for them to go. But, mm-hmm. I mean, they've done aliens, they've done vampires, they've done um, spellcasters, they've done werewolves. Yeah. The next thing is supervillain superhero. Come on. <laughs> How hard is it? How hard is that? <laughs> make them fly. Mm-hmm. Even if they just disappear like some stew. And and also, um, in a, you remember? do you remember there's this one game that was just like The Sims? I think, yeah, it was called The Movies. You made movies, remember that? Yes. You ran a movie studio. It sounds vaguely familiar. I never it played it much, though. I awesome. think you guys I loved played it. it. You, yeah, you, yeah. Lionhead. Lionhead, they made it. The Lionhead made it? Yeah. You could, like, um, set up the seat. You could buy sets and then you could hire actors and then you could make them you could level them up and then you could set them to like make a movie the movies it was just called the movies yeah but they look kind of simish yeah was, i think it was one of no, the last that, games before they got bought this out looks, that's better than i remember it looking oh i don't remember this 2005 game no this does it, it, the, the description know. sounds familiar because you like you could choose the script yeah, you could choose who's gonna do what, and you then depending on your, your you're, writers and your right. cutting room floor and all that stuff. It was yeah, really and good. you could upgrade the park, the trailer, the actors, like depending on your reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never played it. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, heard you, about you guys talking about it, and I think I maybe glanced when you guys playing it, but I never. I actually really seems. enjoyed it. Was it was so fun. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's one of those games that. The game studios, I should say, that just got eventually bought by EA, and oh. they'd buy them and they'd use whatever IP you had for like one more try, and if that next try didn't do very well, mm-hmm. you, you were done. That's pretty much what happened with them. I do want to mention one thing on the horizon for sim sim oh. sim, sim simula- simulation games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is a game called Paralyzed. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. Yes. yes. So Paralyzed is is challenging EA, not EA. Well, yes, EA mm-hmm. challenging them because Paralyzed is doing everything Sims would refuse to do. Mm-hmm. Um, there, and there's there. What is it like? Um, curved walls. They had a Kickstarter instead. Yeah, curved walls. That was a big thing that Sims people have been 
begging for it. Y'all just thought but I do you randomly know? shouted yeah. curveballs? Oh, no, I didn't know. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Are you serious? Curveball. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I was just saying, like, um, the, oh, the color, they have color oh. wheels back, mm-hmm. everything. They have, and th- the thing is, they, um, more modifiable furniture and stuff like you can drag them resize them any size any size or height of person like everything is what sims people have been wishing for they're smaller set of people mm-hmm. and they smaller they like studio. and i don't even know if they're a studio they're not like, physically smaller probably. they're literally small people <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's just it's a bunch of um short people anyways um they had a kickstarter so they're not like they're not even able to rival ea but mm-hmm. the things they're doing mm-hmm. amazing but they they try to tell us like listen this is a long project <laughs> we're doing our best but they they give a lot of updates of what they've been able to accomplish and stuff mm-hmm. like that and i feel like they are forcing ea mm-hmm. to do better yeah because ea came out with a very terrible version of curved walls oh where yeah you can that. do curved walls ish because there are a lot of limitations, but you you can now have like a, a whole circle. Mm-hmm. So I think some things will snap to it, but not in a pretty way. Mm-hmm. Um, windows will snap prettily, and some doors, mm-hmm. some windows and some doors. Like it's specially created windows and doors that can yeah. snap to the mm-hmm. curved walls. So they still haven't reached the potential of Paralives. Mm-hmm. So Paralives, I think, is going to do a couple of things. Number one, um, it's just going to make E work harder. Yeah. And number two, yeah, it, it needs the competition. Number two, it'll be another outlet for people who like this type of game. Mm-hmm. In, instead of like living in, this is the type of game I want, but they're not doing what I want. It's like, yeah. just go escape somewhere else for, yeah. some, for a while, you know? The lighting's amazing. Yeah, it's really pretty. The mm-hmm. game is really pretty so far. They have a Patreon that they, um, shout out to Paralyze if you're interested in simulation games. There's a game called um, Academia, so some of you may know. Oh, I heard you talk about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I loved Academia, 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 Magic School. I loved it. <laughs> it was a very fun game, and it, <laughs> the idea was it was supposed to be like Harry Potter, where you're, you're a kid, but you, you do like a pre-game where you talk about like what happened before your birth, it was kind of hinting at that you may be some kind of a chosen one, but there's also different options, like the sky went black when it was born, or maybe like a volcano went off somewhere else, or maybe a shooting star. Like lots of options. You could really customize your person. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So once you went to school, you made friends, and every single friend had like a very deep personality, and you could form like cliques of like this is your social group that you're with, mm-hmm. and different events like choose your own uh, story kind of things would happen. I never won a single event. But all these events that could get very crazy, like one time I found some cave and then it turned to be some giant monkey god was in there or something like that. And then by the end of it, I didn't even get credit because it caved in and the other guy like kicked me out because I didn't have high enough knowledge to like claim how I got in there in the first yeah. place. So it's very, very intricate. But year one is the only one that was ever made. There's supposed to be four years till you like graduated and then an epilogue that was a plan. And I remember it's been 13 years now since that and um, since I found it. And <laughs> people were like, yeah, year two will be coming out soon. <laughs> it's like Attack on Titan all over again. Yeah, four years later, like, listen, guys, once you get on Steam, year two will be out. They've surely been working on this all this time. Aww. Here we are, 13 years later. People still talking about, nah, Aww. surely it will be coming out soon. <laughs> yeah. like, I still check it every now and again because I own it. So yeah. that maybe, maybe there's a slight chance that they actually have, like, a skeleton crew that's been working no. on it. So the thing is, it's such a deep game. Like yeah. It's very deep. You and need, it's, you it's need a love. text-based game as well. Yes. So they have, like, all of the freedom to do everything. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So it's a Dwarf Fortress situation. Maybe it'll, <laughs> maybe your kids will play it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's been the main issue with these type of choose-your-own-adventure games is as great as the middle is, the ending has to, they have to force everything into a pipeline of one of three endings usually, mm-hmm. because it's, you can't account for everything everyone wants to do in different combinations. Yeah. So with Academia, if year one is that complex, year two has to be like 10 it's times It's gonna be complex. like, yeah, yeah it, just, it just keeps branching out. Yeah. It has to. It has or to. Or the quality has to drop significantly. As mm-hmm. I, I think, they, I do think they genuinely were working on year two, mm-hmm. and it was just too much. Mm-hmm. There, I do, I have done like a adventure style lesson for one of my students once. Really? Yeah, because I always wanted to do an adventure style lesson with my kids and I was like, I wanted to make one. Mm. And I actually was able to do it where it's it does branch, mm-hmm. but it, two of them always branch to the same option. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think there's a way where you can kind of converge a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you can have like these branching things and you feel like you're making all these decisions, but a couple of them, you don't know which, and it could be random, mm-hmm. will converge mm-hmm. to make things less less work. Mm-hmm. That's an idea. If you're listening. <laughs> Game <I>, devs. <laughs> I agree. It's just the players, like... And my, I and myself were very finicky and we're very um, what's what's the word like uh, hard to please hard to please yeah high it's standards like if, if even one if, if even one of those two questions does end up with the same way it's like I feel like I don't have any actual choice here yeah. forget this it's a terrible game <laughs> terrible studio I report you super nice yeah so I think we've been going for a while here so yeah. Yeah, so guys <laughs> that's true thank you guys very much for being here guys if you like your time here please leave a like subscribe if you want to see more remember you can just subscribe if you want to see these all the time we will be coming out with these once every two weeks we're not a full month ahead anymore so if you guys want to be with us we're two weeks ahead you can check us out on Patreon down below thank you very much again guys and we'll see you in the city goodbye bye